Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? I hope everyone has had a good start to the week and had a wonderful weekend. So it's been a busy day for me so far and it only just got a lot busier because we just got some new news from Starfield that I wanted to make a video on as it did just drop this morning. Bethesda has released a lore timeline on their website detailing many different events over the span of hundreds of years leading up to where we will be starting at the beginning of Starfield's story. We are going to go over them and see what we can take from it because I really like when games give you details behind the lore of the universe and break it down on a timeline. Comment down below all your thoughts on this timeline when you first read through it and like the video if you are looking forward to the lore that will come out out of Starfield and subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate that. So jumping right into the timeline, let's start off at the year 2050. It is simply put that humans are first arriving on Mars for this year and by 2100 humans had started living in space. If we couple that in with real life, honestly that is a time timeline that I feel feels very semi-realistic, at least the part that has to do with Mars anyway. I do think that you will see humans start to live on Mars or other planets in general sometime after 2050 or so. As it is right now, we are already planning to see people live on our own moon after 2025. I wonder what you all think about that. I mean, the idea that humans will actually be living in space by 2100 is... A little far-fetched, I don't know if we are quite there yet, but this is a video game timeline, and clearly humans in this universe were much better off than we are now in real life. In 2156, humans will have arrived in Alpha Centauri, which is a triple star system that consists of three stars 4.37 light years away from Earth. Couple that in with one of the game's main factions in the United Colonies also being established three years later in 2159. A year after that, in 2160, the planet of New Atlantis is founded as the capital of that faction. New Atlantis is of course one of the main planets that we will be on a lot in the game, as it also holds the faction of Constellation, with where we are going to start in 2330 in the game. The next several dates with 2167, 2188, and 2194 all seem to categorize a bunch of events that are around some of the factions that we are going to see in the game. As you'll notice, especially in 2194, you'll see that there was a conflict between some of these factions, and that is going to take place particularly with the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. We had already known before this timeline was released that one of the parts of Starfield lore was that a lot of these different factions had had come in conflict with each other in a war that had come out. So this is kind of expanding on that. As you'll see in the next picture in 2196, that is when that war begins. As you'll see 20 years later in 2216, a treaty is signed between these factions to end that conflict. The Free Star Collective also expanded with a more offensive force of people who were able to help protect the citizens of that faction a couple years later. One of the bigger events on this timeline takes place in 2275 with the formation of the faction Constellation, who we know is going to be one of the main factions in the game that we will be exploring for the story. The timeline gives a list of names of a bunch of people who started it up, who I'm going to assume based on the year that it was created and where the year of which the game we, that we'll know takes place in 2330, that some of these people might not actually show up. I just assume that a lot of these people would be very old by that time, or maybe even dead, but this timeline helps to tell you all the lore details behind who did start it, which is still nice. One of the main people who joins up into Constellation in 2305 is the character of Barrett, and in doing some research I think is one of the main scientists who you will actually see in the game as he'll be the one taking you up into Constellation at the beginning on the first mission after you raid a base on a moon that was taken up by pirates. We get some more details of another conflict that takes place in 2307 as the Free Star Collective broke that treaty that was signed in the original war, which ultimately then led to another war between the different factions called the Colony War. I will say from looking at these timelines so far, it is definitely showcasing that the Free Star Collective is a force to not be reckoned with. In 2310, Constellation comes into possession of their first artifact, which we know will be one of the main focal points of the story in which you'll have to look for these different artifacts. A year later, the Colony War came to an end, but it's not detailed if another treaty was signed for peace, which I will say is very interesting. We get some more details on the United Colony side of that fraction in 2315, and then in 2319, another big detail showcases that Sarah Morgan became the youngest head of the United Colony Navigator Corps. That division in the United Colonies shut down, and that is where we get the confirmed detail that we knew already that Sarah Morgan had joined up into Constellation. With that also came a character named Walter Stroud, who joined them as the guy who would finance all their endeavors in 2321. 
The next several dates are pretty much mainly constellation based in terms of some smaller details. A former pirate joins the faction, Sarah Morgan becomes the acting chair of constellation, a character by the name of theologian Matteo Cotri joins, the character of Barrett finds the original artifact and sees something special in it, another scientist joined in 2326, a free star ranger and his daughter joined in 2327, a character by the name of Andreja joins in 2328, and then finally in 2328 as well, Barrett convinces Constellation to build a deep space scanner called the Eye, something that I think we are going to learn more details on in the future, I assume. Once you get to that point on the website, as you keep scrolling down, it takes you to a point where it basically just says 2330 AD Starfield begins. And that right there is where the timeline ends and where we the player will be up to date with the main storyline when the game launches. So listen, I'll just say it right now, I am really interested and fascinated by this because for me, I am somebody who is always lusting for the lore of a science fiction IP. I think for a timeline, this gives us a good look on everything that came before. I have a feeling that some of it will be talked about in the game already, but this is just for I think a lot of the hardcore fans. If you are a casual player who's coming into this game, you might not know about this and we'll hear some of these details when the game is given to you anyway. I have seen some people say that this timeline doesn't look that great and honestly I kind of don't understand where they're coming from. After all this is a timeline and the way that timelines usually work is that they give you a very small amount of detail in terms of an event that took place in a year. It's not like it's a Wikipedia page that is going to give you every single minute detail that took place in that event. This is just something that to give you a small look into what did happen and I think I don't really want to know much more. I'd rather we also get to a point in the game where we can learn more details on our own. I don't want the entire story to just be given to me before the game comes out if you know what I mean. Also, if I did miss anything to add into some of these events, do let me know down below in the comments. So with that all being said, there's not much more really to discuss here other than I will add in one more thing to this video as Something that I came across early this morning was a tweet from someone who said that they had been playtesting a certain space game and that it had cooked real well. And I'm not sure how much to take away from this tweet considering I'm not sure if it is true, but if it is, that is something that is really good to hear about. I know a lot of people are worried with how this game is going to run and if it will be stable, and trust me, I'm right there with you on that, but this is a good sign if, again, this tweet is a fact. I hope you all did enjoy this video, and if you did, be sure to drop it a like again, and subscribe if you are new here and you are looking forward to Starfield, and comment down below, especially all your thoughts on this timeline. And again, if you are not as someone who is on board with this timeline as I am, that is totally okay. Just let me know down below in the comments in a respectful manner, and we can have a conversation about it. I hope everyone here had a great rest of the day, and I will see you all for when we get that developer Q&A on Wednesday. This is Orion, signing out.